Welcome to Logos Live. I've got a special guest with me in studio and a special guest uh, with us from a virtual space somewhere in the world. We'll find out in a minute. The guest in studio is John Schwant, a former colleague of mine here at Logos and now the president and founder of Redemption Seminary. The reason we've got John in studio and this guest who is a student at Redemption Seminary, we'll introduce him in a bit, is that Redemption Seminary, who is a preferred partner of Logos and uses Logos mobile ed materials and Logos itself. Uh, Redemption Seminary has an exciting announcement. And John, I just want you to go ahead and tell us what is that exciting announcement? Redemption Seminary is accredited. That is awesome. Yes. This has been a multi-year process. It's a long process. We've had to maintain that standard to achieve accreditation this whole time in order to be awarded that. Now, uh, it's nice that uh, our students and graduates can benefit from that. Uh, we are happy to continue to deli deliver our unique form of education. Uh, it's different than traditional education that's been put online. We have, our, we have a designed approach to help everyday Christians grow deeper in their faith and their understanding of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the deepest ways without having to leave their, their ministry context, without loading on stress on them. It's an apprenticeship type uh, model with mentors. And I, I'm just happy to tell everybody about it. Yeah, that's fantastic. I actually remember when you were planning for Redemption Seminary, and I got to see some of the planning documents now several years ago. And of course, accreditation of this kind has been the goal since before Redemption Seminary opened its virtual doors. And one of the people to whom Redemption Seminary opened its doors is a personal acquaintance of mine that I got to meet at the Evangelical Theological Society a couple of years ago. His name is Gregory Richardson, and he has been a student at Redemption, I suppose it would have had to have been from near the beginning. But Greg, why don't you tell us about yourself a little bit? Tell us how you serve the body of Christ and then what got you interested in Redemption Seminary? I'll answer those in reverse order. First of all, pleasure to be here. Candidly, it's kind of an honor to be here. Thanks for the invitation, Dr. Schwant. Um, pleasure connecting with you again, uh, Mark. Um, indeed, we did meet at ETS, two ETSs ago. But long before that, I was a huge and continue to be a huge fan of your YouTube channel. Um, the, one of the things that I've been very passionate about is biblical engagement. So how do we help the average church going person to better engage with their Bibles? Not just, hey, you know, I'm reading a Bible plan and I'm, you know, picking up my Bible and, you know, opening it up, um, opening it up to a random page and reading it, but actually getting the content in the right context with the right, um, you know, surrounding information um, as it was intended. Um, so, you know, your channel helps with that tremendously. And the Redemption Education helped me personally with that as well. So that's a little bit about, you know, um, me and kind of redemption. You, the first question that you asked was, um, how do I serve the body of Christ? Um, that's more difficult to answer. I've been a Christian for more than 40 years. Um, but I've never, I've always considered myself to be a, you know, a business person, a person that works in the, the marketplace. So I have a quote unquote regular job. Many times I've asked God, you know, I, do, I, do I have to quit my job and you know, become a minister or go be a pastor or something like that? And I always pretty clearly heard, no, absolutely not. Stay exactly, stay put, stay where you are. And it never made sense to me because I always felt some calling but I never got the, 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 the go ahead to say, you know, drop everything and go and do that. So I, I've been working in the tech industry for, you know, pretty much as long as I've been working um, all the while, you know, balancing and, and feeling this calling from the other side of my life. So how do I serve the body of Christ? Obviously by, you know, spreading the gospel and tr attempting to be a good witness. But in addition to that, you know, I'm involved in many things in my local church. I'm a very, very, very stern firm believer in being engaged with a local church. Um, and I'm stressing the local part of it, you know, nowadays with, you know, internet and, you know, churches via Zoom and YouTube. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking explicitly about finding a body of believers near you, where you fellowship with them and you build community with them on a regular basis. Um, so, you know, I, I serve them in, you know, in men's ministry and ushering occasionally and, you know, wherever they kind of need me. So, Greg, when, when did it occur to you I need to get some more formal 
theological education? And then what led you to Redemption Seminary? That's a two-part question that is one answer. What led me to, um, you know, figuring out that I need a, 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 a more in-depth theological education was stumbling across a little podcast called the Naked Bible Podcast. And the person that I know both of you know very, very well, um, um, Dr. Michael Heiser. Um, I had, when I first stumbled across that podcast, I had already been a Christian for 40 years. Um, so that might have been 10, 14 years ago, somewhere thereabouts. It was early on in his podcast, and it kind of blew my mind away. Um, uh, it blew away the perspective of what I thought I knew about the Bible. Um, that led me to, you know, I, I, I probably, there's, I, I need to uncover um, some stuff here. Like I said repeatedly already, I'd, I'd been a Christian for a very long time. And when I say a Christian, I mean genuinely studying the Bible. I went to Oral Roberts University. Like, you know, I, I, I thought I was a fairly deep Christian. And I thought I had a fairly solid um, uh, understanding of the Bible. Evidently, I didn't. Um, and I had misunderstood many things, or I, I needed further depth in many things. And Dr. Heiser actually led to my introduction with redemption. I remember it extraordinarily vividly. And by that time, I'd met Dr. Heiser multiple times, kind of had a little bit of a back and forth relationship with him. We met in person. Um, you know, we, we met, we spoke via email, not frequently, but, you know, anytime I had a question, I would reach out and ask him and he genuinely, generally answer back an email, you know, in a day or so. Um, so I saw this announcement that, you know, he's going to be announcing something with his Awakening School partnering with um, Redemption. I saw that. And as clear as I'm hearing my own voice right now um, in this little hotel room where I'm at, I'm traveling for work. Um, as clear as I heard my own voice now, I heard God said, that school, you need to, you know, you need to sign up to that school. So literally the same day. I reached out to the email address and it was probably going straight to Dr. Schwantz at that point. And I reached out and I was like, I need to um, sign up. What, you know, how does this work? What do I need to do? And that, that started the ball rolling for me. In between that process, I did reach out directly to Dr. Heiser. And I, I, I'm going to be a little bit personal here. I reached out to him and I said, that last interview you did with um, Dr. Schwant has me in tears. And he's like, why are you in tears? I'm like, then everything about the name of the university, the name of the seminary, and everything that was said, um, it seemed like it was tailor-made for me because formal education is something I had long given up on. Um, I did, like I said, I went to ORU, but I quit college after incredibly three and a half years of college. Um, my parents did not appreciate that at all because they were paying for college, but that's a different conversation. I quit college because I wanted to work in computers, and you know, I, I was I was frustrated that I was stupid. I was very very young, and I, I thought I didn't need anything further from the college edu edu experience. So you know, 20, 30 years later. As far as I was concerned, that was a door that had closed that I could never revisit again. Like, you know, I, I had fundamentally slammed that door shut on myself by my own stupid mistakes. And then along comes a university with a name as uncanny as Redemption um, for God to get my attention and say, even I, I can redeem your dumb mistakes, Greg. Um, so, you know, that, 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 that's how I got introduced to redemption. And that's kind of what started the ball rolling. I'm going to have some more questions for you, Greg, in just a minute, but I want to ask, ask John first, actually, John, when you first had the idea for redemption seminary, and actually, I don't know if it was you or others here at Lagos, was it you? I, uh, it's unclear to me going back that far. I'm, I rarely, uh, am independent. I'm a collaborator. So I'm, I would be surprised if it was just my idea. Alone. When the idea first arose, let me ask it that way. Um, were you having people like Greg in mind? Absolutely. Yeah. It was a seminary for the, the a big swath of the, the majority of the church who genuinely wants to go to have that kind of access to the learning that their pastors got or even pastors that went pro right out of, you know right out of the gates and never went to seminary and now they are they're involved in life in their calling i was thinking of mothers too you know super busy families they can't leave their family to go to, <laughs> to a seminary so how do they get this uh high caliber education and there's got to be a way uh, and so that was that was the need I saw that people that were not being served 
and I saw with technology, advancements in technology, the, the uh, developments of the World Wide Web, uh, uh, openness to new approaches. Uh, you know, the, the uh, classical approach to education is a, actually an industrial mindset, which is pretty old, uh, just in terms of the modern uh, development, uh, where the, the school is a, is a machine and the people are raw material and you want to churn out the same type of product out of the, the, the institution. So you've heard this like, well, he's a Harvard man, or you know, they all have to look the same. I had exactly the opposite goal in this. I, we didn't want to uh, quash or, I guess, predetermine or, or, or I, I think um, wrongly assume what the Lord's calling was for any particular person. And so we wanted the, the product to be as varied as the Lord's calling is for, for people. So um, that's one of the benefits of technology is to be able to deliver uh, a rigorous, unified approach, but have it be applied in so many different ways. And that's where one-on-one -on -one mentoring comes into play. The university system, you have the traditional brick and mortar system, you have you know large class that's all getting the same applications. Now, uh, with, with different models like redemption, you can have individualized attention and guidance. So that is, a, yes, the answer is I had uh, uh, people like Gregory expressly in mind. So let's get Gregory back in mind. Gregory, how did that model work out for you? And actually, can I first ask you to describe very practically what did studying at Redemption Seminary, watching videos, reading materials, working with a mentor, what was it like for you and did it work? What was it like for me? Uh, it was very familiar. Um, because of the heavy, well, to me, I, I obviously don't have much of a basis to compare it to. I haven't been to other seminaries, but for the what appeared to me to be a heavy leaning into the use of technology. So front and center was Lagos. You know, we got that. And we, you know, all of our material was in there. At least most of the material was in there. There were project files that were separate, but you know, all of the lessons and the resources for doing research, they were all in that one place. Um, so that already resonated with the way my personality and my makeup is. I'm a tech person. So that, you know, I'm, and I'm not trying to be exclusionary because I know several other graduates that have graduated with me from Redemption that are the opposite, that are not tech people. There, there are on-ramps to get you there. But for me personally, that tech thing was like a warm blanket around me that made me feel comfortable in a scenario where I walked in feeling extraordinarily uncomfortable. Like I said, I felt like I had slammed the door shut on myself and God used what I'd been in. You know, I, I left formal education and went into the tech space. God used that tech space that I had been in to make me feel kind of warm and snuggly and everything was online. All of the classes were, you know, virtual. My meetings with my mentors on a weekly basis, they were virtual. Um, and, and that was just all very, very, very natural to me because that's how I'd been working in the tech world for, you know, the last five, 10 years or something along those lines. So, um, you know, th that's, that's what studying meant for me, how it actually looked in a practical sense. There was material that you get, lectures that you'd listen to, um, not most of them were pre-recorded, um, and then you'd get assignments. You'd have a, a, a workbook, kind of like a project that you were working on for that, um, that, 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 yeah, that unit that you were doing or the number of units you were doing with that specific class, say, hypothetically Old Testament. And for every lecture, there'd be questions to answer, papers to write, research to be done. So you're working through this 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 large document. By the end of the, the class, you have a, a probably multi-hundred page document that's been completed with your research, everything you've collaborated on with your mentor, and then you'd have the weekly and bi-weekly sessions uh, with your mentor reviewing the stuff that you just went over. Questions, um, should I change this? And uh, I actually still have a relationship with my mentor to this day. I literally met with one of my redemption mentors who is still at redemption. I met with him this morning, three in the morning, which will probably give Dr. Schwant a hint as to who it is, someone that's on the opposite side of the world in a very jacked up time zone. Um, so, but yeah, and I've, I've maintained a relationship with him because he was so instrumental and the relationship we built was so instrumental in, you know, driving me through the process. That's really encouraging. You know, John and I both, just 
by virtue of when we were born and when we went to school, went through the traditional brick and mortar model. And when Redemption Seminary was getting started, I was happy to hear about the mentorship model because I felt as though the personal relationships that I had with my teachers and, and actually my peers were so, so important. How do you make that happen in a virtual setting? Uh, I'm just really glad to hear on the other end of it, now somebody who's taken multiple courses, who's graduated, is saying that it did actually work out that way. I wanna have the same question now for both you, Greg, and for you, John. I'm gonna start with John. John, what do you think accreditation really means for graduates? And then we'll ask a graduate, what, what does accreditation mean for you? Well, it's going to make uh, transferring easy. Uh, this is, these are graduate uh, credits. So a, sem a lot of people don't know what a seminary is. A seminary is a graduate school with, around the topic of theology. Uh, so these are graduate level courses. And so if somebody wants to go on to do other graduate programs, they, they are transferable. Um, it does, uh, it, helps the, it helps us reach more people now, you know, the, in terms of government regulation. That's, I, basically my role at, at Redemption now is a, a John the Baptist role, uh, where I, my, my job is to make everyone's paths straight. So I deal with regulations. And so- I thought you were gonna say your job was to make them repent. <laughs> Okay, just, just checking. Well, I, I would like to have the regulations kind of repent and okay. change it. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. You got to make the way straight for others That's right. so that they can reach their educational goals, which might include especially going on for further education. That's where accreditation, that was the, one of the first practical things you mentioned. What, what are some other benefits of accreditation? Well, like even, uh, so Gregory was able to get accepted into a, a, a doctoral program even without us being uh, fully accredited at that time that he was applying. So it doesn't, it doesn't really slam any doors without it, but it sure makes things a lot easier. And I, I'm a big believer in uh, giving out uh, merit or credit for the work that Christians do a lot. A lot of times, we are overly humble in what we, uh, the work that we set our hands to, the, the the research we do. Part of it is because it's it's holy work. It's it's the Lord's, the Lord's word that we're working in. You know, we're not. We shouldn't be striving in the Lord's words to build you know accolades for ourselves. But at the same time, we should be encouraging one another and patting each other on the back and having a recognized degree that's accredited is an affirmation of the high quality and hard work and diligent faithfulness of our students. That's great. When you, when you said we're overly humble, I'm afraid my mind did go right to the footnote there. <laughs> that is, except on Twitter, right? Which was recently called a sinister outrage derby. <laughs> I don't think people are so humble there, Christian people. But yes, honor to whom honor is due. That's a New Testament verse. And Greg, you are one person to whom some honor is due for your studies. And I want you to tell us now, what does accreditation mean to you? It's immediately, um, again, and I'm learning this as I go. Again, I have very, I, I don't have a, a really deep bench of, of knowledge to compare this to, but it's immediately started opening some doors to me where um, other institutions and now I'm now um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for entitled to or uh, entitled is the wrong word. I can now qualify for other facilities due to the recognition that redemption has has received. So that's that was a huge, huge one uh, because I, I won't say the names of them yet, but some fairly big universities um, uh, have been have expressed interest. You know, some some Ph.D. advisors um, that have written some huge books that I personally study out of um, have reached out and said, you know, they'd like to, to you know take me in as a whatever that term would be, a mentee or something along those lines to work on a dissertation on, you know, the topic that I'm, I've shown interest in. At the last SBL ETS um, IBR conference last November, I actually presented my master's project from redemption at the, you know on the stage um, and it was extraordinarily well received it had a heavy ai component in it so that was the beginnings of me um, kind of joining the tech side of me 
with the scriptural, biblical side of me, the Christian side of me, um, two sides that I'd always thought would have never anything to do with each other. Um, you know, God is opening my eyes to the fact that, no, I kept you over there in that tech world for a reason um, while simultaneously, you know, keep keeping you safe over in the, 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 you know, in my, in my hand, so to speak, as a Christian. Now I'm starting to see th these two things always um, had a path that would seem to merge together. One more question for you, and then I think we'll round out our little conversation here. How, how did your knowledge of an ability to use Logos, the software, how did it grow through your time at Redemption? Dramatically. So again, being a tech nerd, and I, I, I kind of hate that I'm leaning into that so hard, but it is who I am. It is a very significant part of my personality and skill set, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't want that to be a, a dissuading factor for someone who's not tech, tech savvy to think, oh, so Logos is not for me at all. Um, that's not the truth at all. Logos is extraordinarily easy to use. But what I very quickly gained, so I'd, I'd been exposed to Logos before, I'd used it, um, you know, as it was kind of my concordance and a way for me to have multiple copies, versions of the Bible, you know, readily on both my phone and my PC, wherever I'm going, um, you know, and that was about the extent of it. Um, immediately, I started finding tools like the, the Passage Explorer and um, Word Studies, and, and, and that just completely blew my mind. The fact that even sans um, original language training, I could now do um, references based on an original language word like um, is there, you know, in the, the, the um, um, Genesis, I want to say chapter two, somewhere 28, 27, somewhere around there. And, you know, I couldn't have done that search like literally before. I, I, I very quickly gained the knowledge to be able to do that kind of search to see, oh, this is a term that's not, you know, some kind of subservient term. It's, it's instead something that's usually applied to Yahweh throughout the Bible. Like I, I would never have stumbled across that without the tool sets that I, was, that I gained. And that's just literally one of probably 60 examples. I still use Logos routinely. I now have built out a dashboard, um, you know, login. When I, when I start up Logos, I call it my sermon follow along dashboard. And I literally sit in church with my laptop open while the pastor is preaching, with all of the scriptures he said open, taking my notes, I have a little tap of notes, I, and I could see all of the cross references and, and a passage explorer um, unpacked while my pastor or anyone that I'm listening to is preaching. Um, like it, it's been an, it's become an intricate part you, of my life. You are lucky. My wife and daughter would be so embarrassed for me to have my laptop open during church, but I use my iPad Pro and I can use the Logos app on there as well. I am overjoyed to see this result here, to see you take the steps you wanted to take, Greg. I work at Logos because I'd like to see, you know, I, I think of that, um, that statement in scripture, you know, would that all of the Lord's people were prophets. Well, would that all of the Lord's people were biblical scholars, people who knew their Bibles really well, took advantage of the excellent teaching that Christ has given to his church. We teachers are not perfect. Not everything we say is exactly right. We disagree amongst ourselves, but nonetheless, Ephesians 4 says Christ gave these teachers. I think accessing them through mobile ed and then through the formal structures at Redemption Seminary, along with the help of a mentor, is an excellent way for someone to take one, two, five, 10, 20 steps forward in their Christian life. Uh, Gregory, you look like you had one other thing to say that's just on your heart. I don't want to stop you. It, it, was that true? I always have something to say in case it's not obvious. I'm extraordinarily verbose. Um, but it's, it's, it's really just humbling, um, like I said, to have not gone the ideal straight line path, but still be given the opportunity to dig into you know, further study into the scripture um, more, it's, it's, it's earth shatteringly good. And I want to just encourage the, the, the listening audience really quickly, regardless of, you know, your background. And most importantly, I think, regardless to whether you are, are, are tasked or you feel you're tasked to go and start a church or be a pastor, because that was not me. Like one of the questions I asked, and I, I brought this up with my mentors many times, like, why am I doing this? 
I have no aspirations to be a pastor. And I think seminary is something that pastors need to do. And, you know, I was constantly told, keep going at it. You will, it'll form itself out as it goes. And I'm strongly advised anyone that's feeling or calling to just kind of get to know God better, get to know his word better. This is a phenomenal way to do that, even if you're not planning to be a pastor. And then you never know, God might have a plan for you to be a pastor that you're just not aware of. (laughs) (laughs) Greg, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for wherever you are in the world, dedicating some time in your hotel room to helping us and then to helping potential future fellow students fellow graduates then at Redemption Seminary. John, thank you for all the work you've done. Praise the Lord that has gotten this far to accreditation. Congratulations to you. And thank you everyone for joining us for this episode of Logos Live.